But yeah, this week is the week I get married. By this week, I mean tomorrow. And that is kind of scary. So, first off, I forgot to bring the microphone, but I'm hoping that this room is quite quiet, might be a bit echoey, but audio should be okay. But anyway, last week you saw us go on a pre-wedding shoot and we got the photos back the other day as well. So I'll pop some here for you now. But yeah, this week is the week I get married. By this week, I mean tomorrow. And that is kind of scary. And that's, I've seen so many wedding days from start to finish, like, it's weird to think that the person I'm usually taking pictures of and spending the day with is going to be me. So that'll be interesting. But yeah, in all honesty, I'm just looking forward to it. So I'm now in quite a unique spot here where I've gone through the whole planning the wedding process while also, you know, doing weddings. I'm pretty much at the end of that process now. So I'm in a position to give you some advice. And don't get me wrong, this advice probably isn't for everyone. It's what's worked for us and seems to have worked well. We'll, we'll find out tomorrow, but um, yeah. So here's the biggest things from someone who's planned a wedding and shoots weddings. Here's everything I can throw at you. Number one, picking a venue. In fact, scratch that. Number one, picking a day. A lot of couples I've spoke to at the last couple of wedding fairs I've been to, a lot of them are looking at like Thursdays. And with that, I mean, you've obviously worked out by now that my wedding's on a Thursday. And a lot of brides and grooms I've been speaking to at the last couple of wedding fairs also looking like Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays. Like Saturday, it's obviously really popular, but you're hearing more about other days of the week. Quite simply, the price. So if you put it in our perspective a minute, we did actually want the Saturday for the date, but the price difference was too much for us to think, ah, how important is that date? We looked at it and thought, actually, the Thursday is a bank holiday weekend. So anyone that's coming will book two days off but they're also getting like five days off in a row, which is a massive win. <laughs> Plus, the people that want to be there will probably put the time off to be there. So that's probably something not to worry about either. So that brings me to part two, picking a venue. Obviously there's quite a lot of options. You can do venue-wise, you can pick like a barn, pick something outdoors, like you've got the big bell tents, you've got halls, hotels, um, or obviously you've got the, like, the registry office and then go and have like a party or somewhere in a function room or something. There's something for all budgets. So put it back into our world a minute, when we were choosing the venue, looking at April, it could literally be snow, or it could be 30 degrees. Like last year, really hot. This year, don't look great. Hopefully it's dry. But the venue's got a lot of indoor space. So if it does happen to rain, it's not cramped. Everyone can stay inside and it's all right. It's nice, there's some good outdoor space as well, which hopefully, fingers crossed, we utilize. But make sure you look at a few different venues and a good thing to do as well is have a look on like Instagram or something, search the venue, because you'll find photographers when they upload pictures will tag in the venue taking pictures at. You get an idea as to what's possible, what it can look like. You'll see guests tagging in as well. So you get an idea what a wedding feels like at that place. Seeing it in like action as well, in photos, videos, um, makes a massive difference. So step three in my book is booking a photographer. Now this is where an element of personal taste comes in as well. There is tons of photographers to choose from, like literally tons. But what you need to do is work out who you want. But I think there's a good way to break it down to picking someone. So first off, look at the style of photos that you want. Do you want a lot of post photos? Do you not want a lot of post photos? So yeah, first step, work that out. What sort of photos do you want? So next up is choosing the sort of style of photo you want. Do you want something a bit more dark and moody? Do you want something a bit more light and airy? somewhere in the middle maybe, but all photographers have their own sort of style and the way they frame an image and also edit it as well. So that's the next thing for me, is work out what sort of style photos you want. And then lastly, probably the most important bit. So the thing I always tell couples when they're picking a photographer is pick someone you like. And not just like the photos and the style we've just talked about, I mean actually like the person. Because they're with you for the entire day. Especially as like the bride, 
Like, the photographer probably spends longer with you than you do with your actual partner that day because they're with you from prep. So yeah, it's fundamentally the thing I always say is speak to several photographers, whether it's in person at like wedding fairs, whether it's on Zoom calls, phone calls, and you get a feel for that person. Like, at the end of the day, as a wedding photographer myself, I know for a fact I'm not for everybody. But what I do know is the people that do book me, we genuinely get on, which makes the day way easier and way more enjoyable. And the same goes with videography too. Pretty much everything else about photography applies to video. So from step four onwards, it can get a bit more jumbled because obviously you've got a lot of things you need to book. So the thing that I find the most helpful is to have a list of everything you want and everything you like. And obviously with the wants, you need to make sure you start getting in touch with people that you're interested in. So start looking what colour schemes you want so you can get in touch with venue dressers, florists. Find out what their prices are so you can start building that list as to what your outgoings are going to be for the wedding. Obviously if you find someone that's been at the venue you're booked at before, it fills you with more confidence. But if you find someone that's good at what they do, chances are they'll be good in the venue you're in if it's the first time there as well. But yeah, from there, pull in the list of things you really want, start getting in touch, build that list, and move on to the would like list. Because once you've been to a wedding fair, especially a big one, there's a lot of things you're gonna like. And that leads me to step five, or realistically, it's probably like step 12 after you've booked everything else you want. And that is making sure you don't overbook. If you have everything going on for your guests, you're not necessarily gonna get to enjoy it. So if you're booking it for your guests, are you booking it for the right reasons? And if there's too much going on, will it all get used or looked at? And the second point I'm gonna make is just keep an eye on what you have booked. And that's because most things when you start booking, you'll pay like a smaller deposit and then have the balance to pay 30 days, maybe 45 days, 14 days before your wedding date. And it's very easy to book things, pay the small upfront deposit, and then when you get to your wedding date, you've got a lot of money to pay in one go. So that's something that's quite important to bear in mind in my book. And it's also why I offer with my pricing a three-part payment plan and how that works. It's a 25% deposit, 50% in the middle, and 25% 14 days before your wedding date. Because it means that the larger side of the payment is in the middle about six months before your wedding day. So you've not got everything coming at once. And it's probably what most of my couples opt to do as well. And bouncing back to our wedding for a minute, it's also what we opted to do on the things that cost more. And some of the smaller stuff, there's a few hundred quid here and there. We only booked it when we had the money there and then to just pay it straight off. Because the last thing we wanted was to get hit with a massive bill just for the wedding day. And that's all the key points I can think of off the top of my head after doing a wedding day yesterday. And if you are in the process of starting to book a wedding, I'm also starting to put together a small podcast series speaking to various suppliers about what sort of questions you should be asking and things to look for, etc., when booking them. So if that's something you're interested in, that's something that will be coming soon across Spotify, YouTube, etc. So yeah, next time I see you, this hand's going to look a little different. But yeah, if you enjoyed this sit down chat type video, please let me know because I quite enjoy doing the vlogs, but these are also quite fun as well. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.